Hello, everyone. A very big welcome to our special virtual gathering to discuss Soul on Ice in partnership with the New York Islanders and the National Hockey League. We are thrilled to have a couple hundred of you guys that are here um, on this Zoom. I'm Shannon Hogan. I'm a host and reporter for MSG Networks. I cover the New York Islanders. I hope you guys are Islanders fans or at the very least hockey fans. Um, Islanders in the NHL are really committed to helping celebrate Black History Month, which I'm sure you guys have been talking about in school. And we really want to also celebrate the contributions of Black Americans and Canadians to the great sport of hockey. So today we're going to dive a bit deeper into the importance of continuing to encourage diversity and inclusion in the sport of hockey and how that can also translate to your everyday life. I know that you guys have already seen this film, but we thought we'd give you another little sneak peek look at Soul on Ice. The black men of the community could not play hockey with the white hockey teams in the area. They were just segregated. We've got some season ticket holders that are complaining about bringing you here. Bad trades are everything. All the name calling, the N word, I heard it all. He got death threats. You're playing the white man's game. You know that you can compete with the best, but you're the wrong color. For 12 years, we've been coming to hockey, and he's only the second one we've ever seen. Was there a discrimination issue, or was it simply the fact that he was too proud to go to the minor leagues? And you can find good arguments on both sides. There was racial slurs coming from every corner. The only way to get back is to win. <laughs> Race, like so many other things, serve as a distraction. And the minute you allow it to distract you, you'll never reach your destination. It doesn't matter what color you are. If you want to do something, you go and do it. And don't let anybody tell you you can't do that. Why wouldn't you play basketball? Or why don't you play football? And I'm like, why can't I play hockey? What's wrong with it? I didn't realize that at that time that I had uh, broke barriers and opened doors. They tried to get rid of us, but they need us. Our job is to keep building. You got guys like Wayne Simmons and Chris Stewart and PK. You need me. We double up when our numbers come through the TV. Soul on ice. I'm going to put my soul on ice. Nice. He had a dream to be a hockey player. He wasn't going to let anybody take that away from him. They made it so much easier for us to, to come up and, and to play and to, you know, to not think about color as, as, a, as a factor. And, you know, it's just based on our skill and not on our color. Hockey's given me so many opportunities, and the only reason why I even have that opportunity is because of them. Nice. You owe it to yourself if you're playing a sport to know your history. Especially if you're black. Goosebumps. I've had so much fun uh, digesting this film over the last couple of weeks. I know you guys watched it in your classroom. So now we're very, very excited to welcome the director of Soul on Ice. We have Kwame Mason joining us. Kwame has worked in radio and television in Canada. He is a self-proclaimed film nerd and decided to transform his frustration as a hockey fan regarding the lack of representation of its Black athletes in the media into a documentary. And that's the documentary that you guys watched. Kwame now does consulting work for the National Hockey League. He has a successful podcast called Soul on Ice. You should check it out. And he's worked really hard with the hockey community, encouraging everyone to help eradicate racism at the rink and to help grow the game. We also are really, really excited to welcome in Jeff Scott. He is the Vice President of Community and Development at the National Hockey League. He has 20 years of experience within the sports and entertainment spectrum. He's also worked as a sports agent with the big agency IMG, as well as working for the New Jersey Devils as part of the NHL and the Brooklyn Nets. If you have basketball fans in the house, he knows all about that. Um, Jeff really has a passion for sports, philanthropy, and motivational speaking. He works on creating and supporting initiatives, engaging youth sports organizations, community groups, schools, and corporate partners with the NHL. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for this really special discussion today. 
Awesome. Thanks, Thank Shannon. you for having us. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, all right. So Kwame, we have some questions for you to start out. And then Jeff, we're going to ask you a couple before we all get right. to questions from some of the students that they've sent in. So Kwame, how old were you when you were introduced to the game of hockey? How did it come about? And really what inspired you to want to get involved with the sport? That's a really good question. So I'm from Toronto, uh, Canada, and I always tell people if you immigrate to Canada, the first thing they give you when you come into Canada from a different country is they give you a hockey stick. And when you're born in Canada, they don't give you a soother, they give you a hockey stick. So I actually do not remember the age I was when I started liking hockey. As I remember myself, I remember the game of hockey. I have a picture that um, you can actually see in the film with myself and my older brother at the time. And man, we probably were about you know two and three. And we were in the living room facing off, getting ready to play hockey. So um, as far back as I can remember, um, I've always loved the game of hockey. And, um, you know, as far as the film goes, it, it was very important for me to make this film and want to do it because, A, it was um, a dream of mine always to uh, make a film and, and work in that film industry and to create something special. And I thought it was very important that I made this film because I wanted uh, people of color, especially uh, Black people um, across North America, across the world, to understand that we have a long-standing history in the game of hockey, and we should celebrate it and be very proud of it. And I think it's very important for us to know our history, because if we know our history, we know the things that we can do, and we can um, look at ourselves and say, there's no limitation to our hopes and our dreams. Kwame, you mentioned that you basically grew up with hockey, but a little PSA here for the, the kids watching. I didn't really know anything about hockey until mm. I was in high school, about the same age as the students that are watching this. And now it is a huge part of my life. And I got sucked into this amazing sport. What is it about the sport that sucked you in Kwame that really made you love it? And what mm. do you love about it now? You know, it's it, it, when, when it comes to the game itself, watching it, it's fast, it's agile. Um, just the simple fact that these guys go um, at um, fast speeds with these two inch blades and they have to maneuver this little puck and they got to use a stick to it and they've got to just, you know, go in between guys. I think that's very fascinating. It's a beautiful game to watch. And for me, I, I think the thing that I really, really appreciate about the game of hockey is its community. It's, it's a very great family oriented sport from top to bottom from so many different angles. Um, I've been fortunate to meet so many different people from all across North America um, that, that share the same interests as me in the game of hockey. And that's what I take away from it um, a lot because you know, it's something that we can talk about, something that we can have debates about. And the simple fact that I want to see this game grow, it, it gives me some sort of purpose in my life to um, give the kids, like these kids that are here with us now, um, a different aspect of the game of hockey than what it was for me when I was their age. Yeah, it's definitely a sport that is growing and really that family dynamic that you mentioned there, Kwame, you see that within the dressing room and the locker room with the, the players feel like they're their family and their brothers. And then in the stands, when fans are able to go there, it's definitely something you're bonded. If you're an Islanders fan, you're an Islanders fan and you are part of that family dynamic. The NHL as a whole, also a bigger family atmosphere. So Jeff, I want to bring you in, Jeff, and, and ask you what inspired you about this film that Kwame worked so hard Hard to make yeah well, well well thank you shannon and and honestly like you i did not grow up playing hockey was not mm. familiar with it i grew up in the south so i was the complete opposite end of the spectrum as kwame right where you know hockey was not a part of our vernacular it wasn't a part of our opportunities it, it was it was it was non-existent um so what inspires me most about this film and what I love about it is, is the lessons and the education that it provided, right? We had no idea that there was a colored hockey league, right? That was founded in 1895 all the way up through 1930, right? We didn't know that the various forms of the game that you see now and the techniques that are played, such as the slap shot or the way goalies, you know, drop down into a butterfly save, right? We had no idea that those skills actually originated back in the colored hockey league by black men. So to be able to watch that film and learn about Herb Carnegie, to learn about Willie O'Ree, 
to learn about, you know, all of the guys from, from, from Georges Laroque, you know, all the, all the way up to PK and the Subban family. Um, had this film not been available, right? Or had it been available when I was a kid, um, I probably would have fell in love with the game way earlier than, than when I did fall in love with the game. So that's what I'm excited about with this film and this type of opportunity and this platform where we can um, educate the students that are watching, the staff that are on, the families that are contemplating what they should do and what, and, and what opportunities they can afford and, and int introduce their children to. Um, because hockey is such a beautiful opportunity, it's such a beautiful sport, and it needs more diversity, right? It needs more um, individuals engaging the sport. It needs to expand and grow because that it, will, it won't only just enhance the business, but just overall culture, right? With how we inter in interact with one another. And, uh, and this is a powerful film, such a powerful message and meaning behind it. Um, and no matter how many times I watch it, I feel like I learned something new and I'm inspired even more. So shout out to my man, Qualms, for, for pulling this vision together. <laughs> And, uh, and, and listen, man, I, I hope everyone that, that's on this Zoom right now um, felt inspired, um, are now interested to want to go out, learn more about the Islanders, go get that blue and orange jersey, learn more about the NHL, hopefully lace up some skates if they're not already skating and, um, and, and, and take advantage of this great game. Jeff, you mentioned that you didn't grow up in that hockey atmosphere, but it's it's never too late to learn the game and to love the game. And that doesn't mean you necessarily have to even play the game. I mean, you're in that sports world. You've been working in the sports environment for many, many years now. Tell us about getting into that and, and what's led you to eventually be working with the league. Yeah, so I was, I mean, an athlete by birth, right? Um, play, played sports, all sports, except for hockey. You know, from, from the time I was able to walk, um, I was a college football and baseball player and ha had just been exposed to, to the sport, right? So one thing I knew for certain is that I just love sports. I love being active. And what that did after I was done playing, you know, at, at the college level, I knew I didn't want to venture too far away from sports. So, of course, that next step was, all right, how do I find a career in sports? How do I find something that I know I'm passionate about? And I'm a sociology liberal arts major. Um, as I mentioned, I was a college athlete. So of course, in my mind, I'm trying to understand how can I mid merge my two passions, right? With understanding society, understanding culture, understanding community and connecting that with sports. And that's honestly how I got into, you know, in, into the working space, um, specifically in the sports agent realm of athlete representation and being around athletes, but also leveraging the power of sports to drive community change. And that's really what, what, what my career has been in, invested in over these past 20 years is um, understanding that sports, in, in, in my humble opinion, sports and entertainment are two things that, that effortless, effortlessly bring people together regardless of your race, regardless of your gender, regardless of your socioeconomic status, regardless of your orientation, whatever. When you have a team and you put on that same jersey, you're all competing for that common goal, regardless of where you come from. And that's the beauty of sports. Um, that's, that, that's what I've, I've committed my life to. I feel like that is my passion and my calling. Um, and, and, and to this day, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to, to continue doing that. And more importantly, to be able to do it now in a space such as hockey, where there's a need for it, right? There's a need to bring more people of color and under indexed communities into this sport that traditionally has catered to and has targeted, let's be honest, white male and higher socioeconomic individuals, right? So of course, as we just think about the evolution of the sport and bringing people together, um, there's no greater opportunity than, than within the NHL and within the sport of hockey to be able to continue chasing what, what I feel like I'm, I, I, I was born to do, right? And that's bring people together. So it's been yeah, great. I, I love that message of bringing people together and that 
hockey is a, a sport that is inclusive and kind of once you're in on the lingo and you're in on the family, you're, you're part of the group. And the NHL even has a very popular slogan that they've been working on for the last couple of years. Hockey is for everyone. And it really is for everyone, no matter what your sexual orientation is, where you're from, what your parents do, what you like to do. Like you're all, we're all in this together. Uh, Kwame, I know you put a ton of work into doing this film. I mean, there is so much research involved and for the kids that are watching, I, I had a chance to actually catch up with Kwame before we started this. And, you know, you're used to watching a movie or a documentary and you're imagining all the film crews and everybody around. Mm. Like, that's not always the case. I mean, you did so much personal work. Your your blood, sweat, tears, energy went into making this film because you were so passionate about it. Who stood out to you? Because you interviewed mm. some really, really special um, people who were trailblazers. And I, I personally loved that you were talking with parents because you know they play such a big, big role in, in their kids' future and exposing them to different things. Yeah, I think... Um... Two people really um, stood out to me, um, the Lindell family, uh, his mother and his father, um, Nari and um, Heather, they were, you know, obviously Jaden's um, parents. Jaden is the young man we got to see throughout the film who got the knee injury. Um, I love being around their family because I, I, I really wanted to make sure that people got to see what uh, a Black family's interaction in the game of hockey was compared to anybody else's and to show that family community around the game. And I, you know, for anybody that's plays the game of hockey to any level, they have to understand that family is so important for you to get there. So if there's any of the kids out there listening right now, you know, uh, that are thinking about the game, you know, one of the things you're going to love doing is um, sharing the love for the game with your parents. You know, um, Jaden's mom, had no inclination about hockey. She wasn't a fan, but when her son started playing the game, she became one of the biggest hockey fans out there right now. And I love that about her. And then uh, another person that really stood out for me was um, Herb Carnegie, who was the older gentleman in my film, 92 years old when I interviewed him. It was his very last interview before he passed away. And um, that's very special to me because his presence was my inspiration to carry on. Um, you know, Shannon, as you said, you know, when you think of people who are making films, you think of this big elaborate group of people help, um, helping and making these things happen. And I didn't have that because, you know, that was my very first film and I didn't have a lot of money to do it. I couldn't really pay anybody. So I had to learn on my own. So there would be times when I would go out there with a camera, microphones, lights, and the whole nine yards and lug it all over and, and, and sit people down and do these interviews. And sometimes that can be very weighing on your spirit and your energy. And sometimes when people don't call you back, you just kind of feel defeated. And whenever I felt defeated, I, I would just think of Herb Carnegie. You know, on my computer, I, you know, for three years, my screensaver was a picture of myself and Herb Carnegie. And I always found myself frustrated opening up my computer and just looking in his eyes. And it's almost like he was telling me not to give up and, and, to, and to carry it on because, um, you know, if I didn't, then his story wouldn't be out there the way it should have been. So those are the two people that I really um, enjoyed being around and they were both inspirational in their own sort of way. Okay, so I'm gonna ask a question that I know that the kids would wanna know because they're on social media, they're paying attention. If they're not paying attention to some of the athletes in the NHL, you know, they know some of the media members. Who was your favorite favorite celebrity inter interview in there? Because you, you talked to some pretty big names and I'm gonna put any <clears throat> of the NHL or ex NHLers in that. As a hockey fan, that must've been, I mean, a real treat for you as well. Not just having the, you know, the honor of interviewing Herb. Um, yeah. But some of those maybe more more up to date relevant guys that have been in the picture the last couple of years. Wow, um, that is really interesting. I I think for me, um, okay. Well, I already said how much I enjoyed being around Herb Carnegie. I guess for me, it would have been um, Tony McKegney. Uh, Tony McKegney, uh, he played in the seventies and eighties, and you know when you look at hockey today, you see some of the superstars, you know, you look at the guys like Jerome McGillna, PK Subban, Wayne Simmons, all these guys will always go back to talking about 
Tony McKegley as the first black superstar in the NHL. He was the first one to reach 30 goals in the season, the first one to hit 40 goals in the season. He was a very special player. And, you know, um, one little historical note for the kids out there, when black players were playing in those times, for the most part, you know, teams wanted them to be enforcers. They never really saw them as um, creative players or or players that could be on the first or second line. But Tony McKegney was so good that, you know, he became such a superstar and he, and he influenced so many um, young black athletes that were getting into the game around this, the eighties and the nineties. And uh, so, you know, sitting in front of him was kind of, kind of really special just to, just to be around because he was such a superstar that uh, a lot of people don't recognize to this day. All right, Jeff, a question for you. I touched on it a little bit already about the hockey is for everyone initiative. What exactly does that entail from the league's, league's perspective and, and how are they working towards making this sport that we love so accessible? Yeah, that's a great question. And hockey is for everyone is, is unique in a sense where it's not something that we're claiming to have accomplished already, but it's something that we're working towards, right? We understand that hockey hasn't been for everyone, but we want it to be for everyone. So we've been very diligent in creating programs and opportunities to, to support this, this, this initiative that we've all been committed towards, right? So what it looks like for us is making sure that we're normalizing um, under-indexed communities and individuals and stories, um, as well as just, of course, race, ethnicities, orientations, you name it. Um, because we feel like if we are able to amplify these, these various sectors, then it'll welcome more people into this game and have them feel like they are a part of it. So we have a series of initiatives that really take place throughout the entire year, right? So we spend time uh, highlighting the Hispanic community. We spend time highlighting the black and brown community. We spend time highlighting women. We spend time highlighting uh, the indigenous community. We spend time highlighting the LGBTQ community. And then of course, we spend time highlighting those individuals with special needs. And as we think about that, and of course that will only continue to grow, um, we, we feel like the more we can tell more stories you know, about who was the first you know, indigenous individual that played in the NHL, right? Who are the highest ranking females within the organization? Or who are those female hockey players that, that are truly changing the game those opportunities are, um, are, are moments for us to be able to invest in this movement that we're talking about, which is hockey is for, for everyone. Um, so it, it, it's something that has also inspired, you know, all 32 of our clubs to invest in this. We've also, you know, um, made this opportunity available to our, our, our governing bodies. So we're talking about Hockey Canada and USA Hockey. Uh, we're looking at it from the lowest of the low level, right? When we talk about our grassroots and youth hockey uh, organizations and how they can also be a, be, a, be a part of this movement. But the thing that we wanna do, as I mentioned, is just normalizing new faces, new voices, you know, new stories within, within all the work that we're doing because if you don't see it, you don't think you can be it. And that's the messaging for these kids right now. That's why you know, I, I, I'm so happy that we're spending time talking about this film because it's doing just that, right? It's, it's talking about the Tony McKegneys. It's talking about the Jaden Linda Lindo. It's talking about, you know, the Willie O'Ree's so that when these kids that, that are, you know, these students that are watching this film right now, they can see it, right? They, they can see it, right? These, these, these girls, you know, that are seeing you, Shannon, and, and, and the work that you're doing, you know, thinking now, man, I can do that. I, I, I want to do what Shannon's doing and working in, in a sport and being able to talk about it from the, from the vantage point of, of a female's perspective. That's, that's what, what hockey is for everyone ultimately means. And the only way to do that is, of course, to, um, to normalize it. Yeah, Jeff, it's been wonderful the last couple of years. I mean, I've been with the Islanders for seven seasons now. And um, at one point we had three women working on our broadcast now. AJ Malesko, who is a, a gold medalist, is one of our analysts. And to be able to do that on a nightly basis and connect with young people who are watching and say, hey, I like hockey or I like television. I want to get involved. Like that's one of the best parts about my job is connecting with um with students that come up and want to know how I got into it and how I'm doing it. And I know for 
for being anywhere in the sports world, a lot of people feel like that. All right, I have some questions from some of the kids. The different classes had kind of submitted what they were kind of wondering after watching the film. And so Kwame, we're gonna start with the first one. For you, what do you think is the biggest obstacle for minorities getting into a sport like hockey? I think the biggest obstacle is themselves, for one, in the sense that, you know, you have to believe and have a passion for it and want to try it out for the, for, for the, for the most part. Sometimes in our community, we have these stereotypes that tell us we can or we can't, or this is for us, this is not for us. So we have to kind of get that out of the way. That's really a small part of it. Um, another big part of the obstacle is the finance of it. Hockey is a very expensive sport. And, um, you know, it, 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 depending on your, 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 uh, your family background, they may not be able to afford it. Not to say that all black people don't have enough money to play the game, but it does have that stigma to it. And it is a very expensive sport. So you have to be very dedicated to want to play at a very high level. And your parents have to be very supportive to want to spend that money on you um, to play the game. So if your parents are going to spend that money on the game, please do not quit in a year. Keep going because they want to get that return on that money. Um, <laughs> the and then, the case and all the gear, they better enjoy it, right? Exactly. <laughs> you can't you can't do two, three games and say, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. You got to go and commit. really can't quit. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And I think another obstacle is, you know, and, and Jeff touched on it a little bit, and it has to do with the normalization. I think the game of hockey has the perception of who plays it and who it's for. And I think for our community, we feel like it's not for us. It's not inclusive. It's not welcoming. And so we have to get past that. And we have to make sure that we do a better job of normalizing Black faces and voices, Hispanic faces and voices, women, LGBTQ, um, uh, anybody with challenges. We have to just normalize it so people feel once again, that they can walk into that space and feel just as comfortable as anybody else. Yeah, Jeff, kind of following up on what Kwame said there is that some people might think like hockey's not a sport the African-Americans really play or Black Americans or Black Canadians really play. You, you even mentioned you grew up in the South, so it wasn't something. You'd played all the other major sports. You weren't playing hockey. So why do you think that that was? And also, can you dive a little bit into if there are people that are watching, they're thinking, well, my parents are, you know, they're not going to want to pay for this. How do people try the sport and get involved and take the monetary and the money stuff out of it? Because I know the NHL and the Islanders do things to try to make it more available to the community to try out the sport. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as when you think about some of the other big sports, you have a LeBron James, you have Michael Jordan, right? You have uh, Odell Beckham Jr. You have a Mookie Betts. I mean, they're all these recognizable names and faces that when kids turn on the TV or if they're watching SportsCenter, they see someone successful that looks like them. The challenge with, with, with hockey in the NHL for so many years is that there hasn't been that normal face where kids will, will just happen to pass by, you know, a channel on sports and, and, and say to themselves, wow, man, Wayne Simmons or PK Subban or Anthony Duclair, or they kind of look like me. So mm -hmm. if they look like me, then maybe I can see myself doing what they're doing. And I think that's been the greatest hurdle of, of why we as a culture don't engage. Well, one of the reasons why we don't engage in, in, in the sport. Um, I would also, you know, look at it from a, from a cultural perspective, right? When you think about music, when you think about fashion, when you think about entertainment, a lot of that is not synonymous with hockey, right? Some people don't think about, you know, if you see a, if you see a hockey player walking to the locker room when he gets off the bus going into a game, he's probably in a nice custom fitted suit, right? Yes, that's a great look, but some kids may relate more you know, when they see LeBron or somebody walking to her and, and, you know, and he has on some, some, some fresh, di fresh denim with some custom J's and, and an attire that may look more, more like them, right? When you think about it from a music perspective, right? Sometimes you uh, automatically associate hockey with, you know, pop and country. rock and country music, <laughs> you know? And that's some of the things like that's, 
that was one of the the the, the, the linchpins with Soul on Ice. What did you hear? What what drew you into yeah. that film? The music. The music was fabulous. The I music. Love the music is what captured everyone's attention and seeing like, wow, this is this is something that I, I automatically want to 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 point my attention toward. Um, so so to me, and I'm talking about that from a personal lens. I I did not see that growing up. You know, I and, and that's why I'm I'm really adamant about it now while I'm raising a son who is a hockey player that he knows who those black NHL superstars and those NHL players are, that he understands, you know, the cultural connection, you know, to these guys. And then that's what's allowing, you know, him to fuel his passion to want to stay and engage in the sport. Now to your second question about, you know, what can people do, right, to, to get into it and, and to, um, to, to engage with it. Just like anything else, you got to try it, mm -hmm. right? If, if, and, and that's one of the things that we're really working on as a league's perspective is we're creating different on-ramps to get kids to, to, to try it. It doesn't have to be on ice, right? We're looking at ball hockey, floor hockey, street hockey, e-gaming, right? Playing it through video games. We know that that's a huge movement right now. But if we can get kids excited about, you know, just alternate forms of playing the game, then over time, you know, you, you may be, a 16 or 18 year old right now. So maybe jumping onto the ice is not a competitive advantage for you. But if you just start playing video games and you fall in love with the sport, maybe one day you're going to be a father or a mother, right? And what sport may you choose first to put your son or your daughter into? Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's hockey. Mm -hmm. And then that's when that, and that's when we see that generational shift and mm -hmm. you see more, more uh, minorities engaging in the sport. But we, we have to be realistic with ourselves. It's gonna take time. Um, so what we have to do right now is just bring more people into the sport, regardless of what method or mean we bring them into it, but just bringing into it, you know, having them fall in love with the speed, the adrenaline, the, you know, tenacity, the, you know, the physicality of it, like all of those beautiful aspects, you know, that, um, that come along with hockey, have them fall in love with that and then watch over time how the sport will evolve. Can I, just add, can I just add to that? I think the most important thing that Jeff said in that whole statement was the fact of trying. And I think for the young audience that's listening right now, uh, you know, some may just be like, oh, hockey, just give it a try. Just give it a watch. You know, if your friends got the video game, give it, give it a go. And uh, if you get a chance to go and see an Islanders game, maybe your, your school has a, an outing or something, just go, and, just go and check it out when we get to that point again. But just try it. And, and, and then decide. And I'll tell you, nine times out of 10, if you go to a live hockey game, you're going to be a fan of the game walking Absolutely. away from it. That's how it was for me. It got sucked right in. You guys, yeah. we're, we're running short on time because I know that the students have to go to their next class a little bit. So I have a couple bigger lens questions that I want to get to because sure. you know what? Hockey might not be your thing. Sports might not be your thing, but the discipline and the, the things that you learn in that environment, I really feel like are, are life lessons that you can take in different aspects of your life. So Jeff, can we just start with you? Any advice for following your dreams? Because obviously mm. even from being an athlete, to being in the sports industry on, on several different levels. So, so what is your advice for that? Yeah, to, to put it quickly in the essence of time is I, identify your passion, right? If you, if, they, if you know that there's something that, that wakes you up every morning that you enjoy doing, whether you get paid for it or you don't get paid for it, try to identify that and try to, and try to follow it. Uh, there, there, there's a quote that Willie O'Ree, you know, is known for saying that it, it always sticks to me and you know, it's one thing I want to share with you, but never let anyone tell you, you know, that you can't do something. Uh, he says, if you, if you think you can, you can. And if you think you can't, if you think you can't, you're right. So believe in yourself, follow, follow ex exactly what you're passionate about. And the beauty of sports is, you know, you don't have to love that particular sport to, 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 to fuel your passion there's something within that sport where you can, uh, that, that, where you can flex your passion on it, right? Whether you love music, there's sound engineers, there's, there's DJs, right? Whether you love finances, there's that side. Whether you love creative, there's that side of it. So find that passion and then just go ahead and chase after it and don't let anyone tell you that you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Kwame, this uh, film itself was so inspirational that I know you have more deep down that you can give us. What's one thing you want the kids to walk away thinking about after this conversation today? 
Uh, just, just think about the theme, and I don't know if you discovered the theme, but the theme of the film is perseverance through adversity. Um, a lot of those players that play, especially in the past, went through a, a lot of um, bigotry, a lot of hard times. They had to fight through just to play this game that they love, but they did it. They persevered through adversity to do what they love. And I think regardless of his sport in life, life isn't always you know roses there's going to be hard times and if you just give up you never know what can happen there's a lot of guys that i know that were really great hockey players but because of what somebody said to them in the stands or because of what they felt about the game they quit and they never knew what they could have been in their lifetime george larock tells me a great story that when he was eight years old his parents said, George, we need to take you out of hockey. This is too much. All the name calling, um, it, it's just not something for you. And he said to his parents at eight years old, mom, dad, if I quit, they win. So regardless if you become a hockey fan or you play, if you take anything out of this conversation from myself and Jeff is to persevere through adversity and follow your dreams. You guys, both of you inspire me so much. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, if you guys are watching this, make sure to check out Kwame's um, podcast, Soul on Ice, same name as the film. You can check that out. Um, I'm sure that, that both those guys are on social as well. We are hoping someday soon to have all of you come to an Islanders game to really experience the magic of being part of the Islanders family. It is such an exciting team. You can watch us on MSG+. Plus. We've got games basically every other day. Tomorrow you can watch. Tune in for our pregame at 6.30. That's a shameless plug right there on MSG+. Plus. And also you can follow the Islanders on social. So that if you're looking, it's on Instagram at NY underscore Islanders. And on Twitter, it's uh, at NY Islanders. I'm sure there's a TikTok or something, but I'm too old. I don't know what that is. So the kids will find it. I know that they'll find it. But you guys, hey, Jeff and Kwame, thank you so much for this conversation. Students, teachers, we appreciate your time. We're glad that you enjoyed the film. Stay safe and uh, we'll hopefully be seeing you at a game sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you, guys.